right, let's talk about the Chicago Bears and some news involving Chicago, of course, coming off a tough loss against the Los Angeles Chargers. Let's be honest, backup quarterback beat up squad against the Chargers team desperate for a win. That was not going to work out very well, but it looks like the Bears are making some smart moves at the trade deadline. The front office is doing a lot better than the coaching staff, and I think it'll set them, set them up for long-term success. But let's go into the story first, cover the first move they made, first announcement, I should say. Mize, this is, if you want to throw it up, this is from NBC Sports. All right, this is involving Jalen Johnson, a uh, talented young corner. The discourse around Jalen Johnson's pending contract extension with the Bears has been in full force since the NFL trade deadline approached. It seems fair to say Johnson will not be traded at the deadline, at least. That could probably be said about most players rumored on, rumored on the Bears trade block at this point. But Johnson's not guaranteed the contract extension he's looking for from his native team. Uh, we're in a phase where we want to retain homegrown talent, Ryan Pohl said on ESPN 100, 1000 before Sunday night's game. That's important. But again... It takes two sides to make something happen, so we'll see if that works out. ESPN's Courtney Cronin said polls reinforce the question, can the team and the player find common ground that makes sense all the way around? Reading between the lines, it sounds like Johnson's camp and the Bears haven't met on a figure for the cornerback. Smart move by polls. Jalen Johnson at this point feels like he has all kind of leverage. Everyone knows the Bears camp space. He's like, hey, give me a mega deal. Polls is like, not so fast. I'm not going to give you the mega deal you want. If it's going to be a deal, it's going to be a team-friendly deal. There have also been uh, recent reports coming out that polls have said, look, it's going to be a quiet trade deadline. We're focused internally right now. I think that's also the smart move for the Bears. You don't want to be sellers, obviously, sitting where they are. Playoffs don't exactly look like it's something that could be happening this season. But I think they do have enough pieces already to focus towards the future. I don't think now's the time to just ship off whatever assets they do have. And they do have some good young players. I think focusing internally, whatever deals you get done, make sure the team-friendly deals is the right strategy for the Bears. And I think Ryan Poles is doing a good job sticking to that. Myas, I'm curious what your thoughts are on, but Chicago fans got a big game next Sunday, of course, against the New Orleans Saints. Saints are kind of an iffy team to catch them on the right day. They're pretty much beatable by anybody. Give us your prediction, Chicago versus New Orleans, in the comment section below. But Myas, what do you think of how Poles is handling the trade, the trade deadline this year and all the moves he is making, or rather deciding not to make? Yeah, no, I think it's a really smart way to approach everything. First of all, I like that they're not sellers at the deadline per se because there are a lot of nice pieces on this team. We talked about the possibility of them potentially selling off some pieces earlier, but I think when they come around and they've now come out and said, listen, it's probably going to be kind of quiet, not necessarily going to be buyers, not going to be sellers. I think the Bears are in a good spot to say that. They have a lot of high-end draft picks in this coming draft, a lot of good ammunition to rebuild this team, and they have a lot of good pieces. Johnson being one of them, if they can get the deal done. But I also like how they're like, listen, we're not going to break the bank. It has to be a team-friendly deal. It is reminiscent of the Roquan Smith thing last year, but Roquan Smith had a little bit more leverage than Jalen Johnson does. Roquan Smith had been an excellent player for a very long time. Jalen Johnson is kind of like his breakout year. The last three years before this one, 54.9 grade in 2020, 64 grade in 2021, 62.9 grade in 2022, kind of decent in 21, 22, nothing spectacular. This, obviously, he is grading very high this season, showing he's a high-end player, but you gotta let the season play out. What someone's grading at now and what they are at the end of the season isn't necessarily uh, correlating towards each other. It could change. He could stay the same. You never know, but this is such a small sample size to break the bake on. This is a Bears team, has a bright future ahead of it as far as all of the opportunities it has through draft picks and young players developing on this roster. You don't want to break the bank on a guy that you're not 100% sure if he can be the absolute future for this team. So I like the fact that they come in here and said, hey, listen, we want to give you a deal but it's got to work for everybody. So I love that move by Poles. Like you said, this front offense is outclassing the coaching staff at this point in the season, and it's looking really good for Chicago in the future. Yeah, and I think you brought up a great point because we always talk about it all the time on this channel. When you're trying to re-sign players, the worst thing you can do is buy high. When a player's playing the best ball of his career, don't fall in temptation to wait for that moment to give him this big deal because obviously you're going to be in the worst position as a football team. You want to get it right around the middle of the pack for a team-friendly deal or at least a deal both sides are happy with. You don't want to overpay right in someone's breakout campaign because obviously if you look at the four seasons so far, 
three show, meh, not very good. One outstanding, let it play out. You brought up a great point there. But I wonder if the fact that they aren't buyers, and not that anyone really planned for them to be buyers, makes me wonder if they're officially moved on from Everflus, right? It feels like Poles is the guy to run the front office. He hasn't done everything perfect, of course, but I think generally he's done a lot of good moves, generally smart. His strategy makes sense. I, I feel like Everflus is gone at this point. The fact they're not aggressively adding talent to maybe make a run in an NFC North that is winnable. If you, I mean, the Lions are still the Lions. They look pretty good, but we don't know how good they really are. The Packers are a dumpster fire. The Vikings, unfortunately, lost Kirk Cousins. In a normal situation, you sit there and say, well, maybe we'd be a little more aggressive. You know, when Justin Fields gets back, we're going to be a better football team. But I think this is a sign from the Bears front office that they're like, look, no, we've got some good pieces. We want to develop them. But Eberflus is gone. We're going to change coaches in 2024. Do you get that same kind of vibe coming out of Chicago right now? Yeah, no, I think you do get that vibe. Obviously, the rumors are swirling. Everyone's throwing around that name, Harbaugh, out there. Who knows what is actually going to happen with that whole situation? I, I think there's way too much up in the air to think about it. But the fact that you hear the rumors shows discontent with Eberflus. I think there's a, you know, he hasn't really done anything spectacular. He has, quite frankly, not been much better than Matt Nagy was. It shows the scheme. He shows to be like more aggressive at times. But you got to beat the good teams with the bad teams. And when they play the good teams, it just doesn't work out. When they play bad teams, they can put up some points. This offense has been interesting at times in the season, uh, especially the big win over the Commanders, putting up 40 points again a win over the Raiders as well, putting up 30 points. But then you come in and you throw duds against teams like the Chargers. But that's backup quarterback. Can't put too much on that. But there's other ones. The game against the Chiefs, only 10 points. And we've seen what the Chiefs have done this season. It, it, it's too up and down. It's too volatile. So I think they move off of Eberflus and they go after somebody that's looking for the future of this team, Nick. Because when you put all the pieces out here, we talk about the future of the team. But you talk about your future head coach. This is a dream team to come to as well. A lot of young pieces, a lot of high draft picks, potentially the number one, number two overall draft pick. That's still on the table. You know, who wouldn't want to come into a situation like that where you immediately get two extremely high draft picks? A lot is going good for the Bears. So I agree with you here. I don't think Eberflus is long for this Chicago world. And I think there's things that, you know, can be very interesting going forward for the Bears.